Hello, and thanks for joining us. From a real-life experiment that will make you a monster to the challenges of surviving a move to Paris, welcome to Encore's weekly film show. La plupart du temps, le lait apparaît comme le simple négatif du beau, et c'est très réducteur. 65 volts strong shock. Let me out of here. I will not be part of the experiment anymore. Look at all these people. You realize that they all have probably lived complicated lives. They have their own fears, their own loves. You gotta do something else, man. You gotta keep moving. And I'm joined in the studio by our film critic, Lisa Nesselson. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Eve. Now, you've spent a week in the French city of clermont ferrand watching short films. Now, it's not a well-known film festival, but you've been going for more than 20 years and you love it. Tell us more. Not well-known. Well, I'm here to rectify that. Let me tell you about the Clermont-Ferrand Festival of Short Films. It's a nine-day event held in a college town where I believe the vast majority of the 35,000 students don't attend classes in order to stand in line and to see programs of short films from No Joke 10 in the morning until well past midnight in no less than 17 venues, including the main auditorium, which holds 1,701 able-bodied viewers and has room for 31 uh, people in wheelchairs. It is the only festival I know of where there is such demand for the closing ceremony and the winning films that they do it three times in a row. So uh, that's 5,100 people of all ages fighting to get in to see short films. Okay, and how did such a thing get started? Well, it began 38 years ago, and back then participants were sleeping on dorm room floors, but many of the best-known directors of French features, Matthew Kasovitz, Cédric Lepiche, François Ozon, got their start showing their short films there. An international competition was added 31 years ago, and most recently, my favorite section, section Labo, which shows unclassifiable experimental work. The accompanying film market shows a dazzling array of films to people from all over the world. Over 4,000 professionals stop there, many of them on their way to the Berlin Film Festival. And uh, they have a year-round headquarters that's a world-class repository for short films. Again, people uh, check in from, uh, from, uh, from, sc from schools, from TV stations, from other festivals. Over 160,000 ticket buyers this year. They call it the can of short films for a very good reason. And this was my 23rd visit. And the one thing that never changes is that the filmmakers from the rest of the world cannot believe how well they are treated in France, that they have 1,700 people in a beautiful auditorium to watch their little short film. They range from one minute long to 59 minutes long. And in Clermont-Ferrand, the debate about whether women can make movies or whether actors with non-white skin should be in films is absolutely settled. They abound everywhere. This is a film that won the audience prize because the general public gets to, uh, gets to vote. I like it very much. It was in the Labo section, and it's called Ghost Cell. Let's watch. totally horrid, Lisa. Well, m maybe it does to you. I think it's artistically quite impressive, but <laughs> it's not as horrid as waiting in line to get into movies, which uh, for the first time in my life in Clermont-Ferrand, I waited three hours to get into a program where there were only 324 seats. And I know I'm not crazy because 323 other people did the same thing with me. This year, by the way, the winning films were from Chile, Austria, New Zealand, Algeria, and Peru. So you see how international it is. Truly international. Well, let's um, talk about what's out in French cinemas now. Um, a film called called Parisienne. Um, it's a semi-autobiographical film by the Lebanon-born filmmaker Daniel Arbid. Tell us more. Well, this film is a real treat. It's the bittersweet story of a physically lovely but mentally ambivalent young woman, I think 18 years old, who comes to Paris from war-torn Beirut in 1993 with vague plans to attend the university. Uh, you're a European, so um, you had the right to be in France from the get-go, and your experience, early experiences, were probably a little different from mine. I was, in fact, an illegal alien for many years doing all sorts of odd jobs under the table and making weird friends and getting by on no money at all. And boy, does the writer-director capture what that's like. Uh, the film's heroine stumbles into an art history class taught by a teacher most of us would kill to attend. Uh, and this is a, 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 about French intellectual um, get-go about books, politics, poetry, drama, love, art. Let's take a look. Qui se trouve moche dans ce cours? <laughs> ah, 
Voilà, deux garçons moches. <rire> voilà, non, la jeune fille, non, la demoiselle non plus. Bon. Eh bien, puisque personne ne s'avoue moche, nous sommes en phase avec notre sujet. Dans ce coup, nous allons aimer le lire. Well, France 24 spoke to the director, Danielle Arbid, and she said the film is about her own personal experience coming to France from Lebanon. It's a vision about the, the things I felt when I came to France. It's the shock I felt at the age of 17 when I arrived. And it's about how France came to me. You know, like just... Uh, how I felt it uh, very powerfully, the, 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 the shock, and uh, how I got to know France. The original title of the film was uh, Getting to Know France. <laughs> okay, that was Parisienne. Now to a film based on a true story. Back in 1961, the American social psychologist Stanley Milgram conducted a series of radical behavior experiments that tested people's willingness to obey authority. I wonder what, what, how that would, you'd react to that, Lisa. And the story is being told in Experimenter. Peter Sarsgaard plays him. Well, like Steve Jobs, this is a film based on a real person whose work has had an extraordinary number of repercussions on modern life. And although you may not know the name Stanley Milgram, after World War II, he wanted to figure out why so many people went along with the Nazi apparatus and decided, yeah, let's exterminate Jews. That seems like a good idea. Why it, the famous utterance over and over again at the Nuremberg trials that people were only following orders. So at Yale in 1961, he designed an experiment in which volunteers believed they were administering painful electric shocks to an unseen man in another room each time he gave the wrong answer to a question. Now, the victim was an actor uttering fake moans and screams, but the study participants had no idea that that was going on. Milgram expected the volunteers to refuse to inflict pain, but um, actually, if it turned out all it took was someone with authority uh, in a white lab coat to say, please continue with the experiment. And the vast majority of people went on administering pain to another human being. Some of them protested a little bit, but for the most part, they submitted to authority. Milgram didn't get the results he was expecting, but he had to accept the evidence because he was a scientist. I spoke to writer-director Michael Almereda at the Deauville Festival of American Film a few months ago here in France, and this is what he had to say about the continued relevance of Milgram's work over 50 years later, and also about a, a little difference between France and the US. Let's listen. Milgram remains very relevant. There's, there's the police violence against black people. There's Abu Ghraib a few years earlier, the abuses that were uncovered and justified as we we're just following orders, just following protocol as, as instructed. There are routine, almost routine waves of violence and aggression, and even genocide, that we keep confronting and not knowing how to deal with. One thing I hadn't anticipated or remembered clearly is that Milgram's experiment is cannot be replicated in the US in an academic setting because of regulations that have come in. That since the time he did the experiment, it's impossible to replicate it thoroughly. But in France, it was replicated under the guise of a reality game show. Milgram actually got into trouble for his research, didn't he? He certainly did, and that's what makes the story of his life doubly interesting. He was a dedicated social scientist. Peter Skarsgård couldn't be better playing him, and uh, people didn't like the results, and so they thought he had somehow rigged the experiments to come out that way, which couldn't be further from the truth. Um, and the director uses um, deliberate sort of artificiality, green screen, weird special effects, and this works absolutely in favor of the story. Also, it's a love story, and Winona Ryder is excellent as Milgram's devoted wife. Here's a taste of Experimenter. Rug, pillow, hair, grass. Incorrect. 165 volts strong shock. Let me out of here. I will not be part of the experiment anymore. He, he says he's not going to go on. Please continue. He, he says he doesn't want to go on. We must continue. I'd like to think that we wouldn't follow the orders. That was the experimenter. Now, out this week in France as well is The Summer Feeling, the second feature by Michael Hurst. 
Well, this is a deeply melancholy story about coping with shattering loss, and it stars Norwegian actor Anders Danielson Lee as a young man whose live-in girlfriend just suddenly dies from one minute to the next in Berlin. And then in Paris, and then New York, year after year, he gradually embraces life again. It was shot on celluloid, it looks fabulous, and the leading man first made a splash a few years ago in a Norwegian film called Oslo, August 31st. He is impossibly lanky, he has gorgeous teeth, uh, and unlike most film actors, however, he is, this is a long list, he is a practicing medical doctor. He's married to Norway's most prominent fashion model. He records music, writes fiction, and just happens to act in movies in the leading role from time to time. It's as if uh, Johnny Depp or Tom Cruise did heart transplants between embarking on scripts. And this is probably the best performance at the moment by a super lanky polymath. Uh, and rising French actress Judith Schemla is also fun to watch as the dead girl's pleasantly flaky sister. Okay, sounds exciting. Well, we started the show by celebrating the way France supports budding filmmakers all over the world. Um, on at the moment is a week-long festival for under fours. Can they sit through the, a film, Lisa? Well, this festival is a brilliant idea put on by the Forum des Images to train very, very young people to build memories about going to the movies with a trusted adult. They tell them the lights are going to go down, don't be scared, look at the big white rectangle, and it builds polite, attentive youngsters. They select films that are suitable for audiences as young as 18 months, up to the age of four, and um, it teaches little kids how to be patient in public, and since they are training in France, lots and lots of filmmakers, lots and lots of actors, and they're building new cinemas all the time, I think it's a brilliant initiative by the Forum des Images to build the audiences of tomorrow. Okay, well, I'm taking my kids on Saturday, so I'll let you know how it goes. And thank you so much for joining us. Remember our website, we're also on Twitter and Facebook. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. <laughs>